Big hello to everyone. To paraphrase a well-known saying, tell me which game you have in the first place, and I'll tell you who you are. And this is true to some extent. Our taste in the desktop hobby is determined by our top games. And for a long, long time in the first place among all the board games in the world, and there are many, many of them, a huge number in the modern hobby, there are not even tens, but hundreds of thousands of games. And for a long time I had stable Mock Knight, Knight Mac and Vlad's game in the first place. I met her at the end of the 17th year, and the channel still has those first impressions that covered me after getting acquainted with this masterpiece of game design. Everything is fine for me here. Just a brilliant game in almost all respects. Yes, it looks too bulky and too complicated right now. I remember that I specifically timed the time it took me to master it. And that was 24 hours. That is, it's not just a day, like I studied it in a day. That's 24 hours of continuous study. That is, for a week there for several hours a day. And this is, well, impressive even so far. There are very complex complex rules here. There is a very complex complex gameplay. And sometimes the whole gameplay consists in the fact that you are continuously solving puzzles of one complexity or another, which just intellectually dry you up. Absolutely great game. The first place for more than three years in my top one on the throne, so to speak, Rain Knight Mac. And it's not a fact that he will leave this place, but sometimes we have newcomers who apply for this place. Last year it was the City of Kings. Unfortunately, I never mastered it enough to make such a normal comparison and see if he threw in a challenge or not. A purely primary feeling is that the City of Kings is very good, but I'm on it, I haven't played it enough to accompany the comparison that I'm going to do now. So, in the 2020th year, a new young candidate appeared. This is Tamani Bones, who claims the first place in my top one. And this video is dedicated to a simple question. Who is the top one in the world of board games for me? As before, Summer remains in the Mock Knight or it was displaced by Tamani Bones. This video is primarily interesting for me, but I hope that it will also be fun for someone to look at this reflection from the outside. I'm shooting this video now, I still don't know who is in the first place for me. And we will try to determine this together with you right now, comparing these two games as objectively as possible. Although it seems that these are absolutely different types of games, in fact they are about the same weight category. I'm not too original when comparing them. On Western platforms, it is very often Tamani who is compared with Lee by his magician. Although mechanically and in many other things, these are very different games. But they are in the same weight category, they are about the same. In one area of attention, if someone likes one of these games, then they are very likely to like the second one. But which one is bigger? This is an individual taste and there is no point in talking about them. But the objective comparison that I'm going to try to make now, it takes place. So, in addition to the emotional comparison, there was some objective one, I divided this video into several parts, in each of which we will determine the leader. And the first section that catches the eye and which is obvious. These are the appearance and components. I must say right away that here, in both of these games, there are excellent components, excellent manufacturing, excellent production. In Knights of Magic, these are painted wonderful figures, plastic miniatures, excellent corrugated cards, excellent cardboard components, many different tokens. Everything is very classic, that is, cardboard plastic, but everything is done at a high level. The components of Tumani Bones are original, they claim to be original. Here, Instead of miniatures, there are chips, poker chips. Instead of cards there are cubes, instead of paper cards, cardboard, plastic cards. The fields here are neoprene, that is, they decided to move away from the traditional cardboard and came up with something original. 
That is, all the fields here are mouse paths, as I call them. It's original, it may be redundant, but at least it's unusual. And it feels like there are some premium feelings, there are some such feelings. Originality. The same chips, everything is very well done. That is, if we take it purely by components, then the Mac Knight is very good, but this is a classic design. These are cardboard, these are plastic miniatures, these are cardboard tokens and fields. Tumanipinets are original components. Games with such, it is with such a set of components that you can count on the fingers of your hand. And most of them are followers of this particular company. Therefore, according to the first such comparison of appearance, I believe that equality. There is a wonderful appearance, beautiful cards, beautiful miniatures, beautiful fields. On the field, on the table, the game looks absolutely beautiful. You can photograph these castles, these wonderful landscapes, wonderful art on maps. Everything is wonderful here. Here the appearance is controversial, but the components are higher level than the traditional ones. At least they are unusual. And if I would not take the Night Mac game purely by components, for example, just because it has cool components, then I took Tamani Bones just because I wanted to watch an unusual game with unusual components. And only after that she came to me and fell in love. A Night Mage could not have such a thing in principle, simply due to the fact that her components are, so to speak, ordinary. Therefore, in appearance, I put equality between these games, but in terms of components, Tamani Bones takes a point and, I think, few people will dispute this. Appearance, of course, is important, but not essential for real board game lovers. Therefore, let's move on to the second section of the comparison, this is the genre. Genres. The genre here is very similar. The games are actually very similar to each other. If you do not take, do not delve into the mechanics, which we will definitely delve into a little later, and if you take purely external ones, these are games of about the same genre. You have a purpose. In the fog, Bones is the ultimate tyrant to be defeated. In the Night of Magic, these are either the final cities to be defeated, or the final boss in the form of General Volcar, or some other goal to be achieved and solve the problem. Then we have character development. Here each of the heroes has his own deck of cards, which you pump during the game. Here, each character has this deck, which we develop, and Tamani Bones has a character mat, which we pump during the game, adding different properties to it with the help of these cubes. That is, there is an ultimate goal, the final boss, there is character development, albeit in completely different ways, and there is an action game, which in these two games is also very similar. That is, what we are fighting in Tamani Bones, these are such round enemies, each of which has its own parameters, well, we deal with these parameters during the battle. What is there in a Night Magician? There is a circle of enemies that has certain parameters with which we are trying to defeat them. That is, the genre of these games is very, very similar. But nevertheless, would define this game as almost entirely a tactical game, whereas Night Mac is more of a strategic game. And here I can't, purely in the genre version, I can't give some game an advantage here, because someone likes tactics more, someone strategy. And these are not pros and cons, these are different perceptions of the game. Therefore, in this genre comparison section, I give the same point to each game. Let's move on to another rather visual and rather obvious type of comparison, this is a story, this is a narrative, this is end. And here, in general, is a fairly obvious advantage for Tumani Bones. A night magician has a narrative or a story, or a R.O. lore, it's, well, a few paragraphs in the rule book, and that's it. 
You don't know anything about the heroes, you don't read anything in the gameplay, that is, there are no cards with stories, you don't get events, you just have a continuous miscalculation, continuous combat, continuous pumping without a story. There is a story in the fog of bones, and it is, well, let's say, good from the point of view of a literary text. The history of ENT was developed by a professional writer, especially later, especially in supplements. There, this story just blooms with additional colors. You will learn so many interesting things about the world, you will learn the nuances of the relationship of the inhabitants of this world with the Gerlocks. That is, this is not the basis, it does not affect the action in any way, it does not affect the gameplay itself in any way, but this story, it is formed, it is, sometimes it turns out to be very entertaining. How is history formed here? You have a deck of cards with different random events. From them you form a deck for your specific adventure. And they are recruited there, well, roughly speaking, randomly. Yes, there are several planned cards, such as tyrant cards. That is, each boss villain has his own personal events, which necessarily happen if your final boss is this tyrant. But all other events are random. Therefore, the story may be purely random, or it may quite logically develop. But since the Night Magician does not even have this, then in this section, in the narrative section, in the history section, the Bones definitely wins from Yuman and gets his well-deserved point, because, let me remind you, there is no history at all. And I'll even show you. Here, these three columns of text are the whole story of the game Night Magician. You have to figure out everything else yourself. Let's move on to the next section, the most difficult, probably, and the most controversial. These are the mechanics and gameplay. And here, of course, it is very possible to compare for a long time and successfully or unsuccessfully, depending on how you look at it, since the games and mechanics are very different. Let me briefly tell you for those who do not know what these games are. I'll briefly tell you and show you what the gameplay is, and then we'll see what we like more. So, the gameplay. We have two games in front of us, which are more or less laid out. Of course, there are many components missing here, but this is enough to understand. What is the gameplay of the Night Magician? You have a hero, your hero with certain properties. Here it is a deck of properties. And these properties are written right on the maps. Accordingly, you have an open hand. Depending on the progress of the hero, this hand may be larger, it may be smaller, as well as on the conditions on the map, from many factors it is different for you. Moreover, in your turn, you can manipulate only those cards that you hold in your hand. You also have a deck from which you replenish your hand after you have worked out your turn. You move along the map, which gradually expands and opens up the world of this game. To move, you need to spend units of movement from the cards, to fight, you need to spend units of movement from the cards again, and so on and so forth. You move around the map, reveal it, meet enemies. That is, let's say if we have swords here, then enemies open here, here we have magic towers that we can open in the process, and so on. That is, depending on what we open, we have different interactions with the elements on the field. There are sources where you can get treated or take something. There are enemies that can be defeated and get glory points, which are victory points in this game. There are monasteries where you can interact with the locals again, there are fortresses, towers, and locals in general. And in terms of mechanics, you have everything you need for a fantasy world here. You interact with the locals, you destroy enemies, you achieve your goals. All this work is done on the card engine. That is, the process is moving around the map, opening it, looking for what you need, pumping your deck. That is, during the game you get different cards of different types. There are artifacts, there is magic, there are some advanced actions. And when you get something, you put it in your deck. And when it ends, you shuffle it accordingly and your next round in this game will contain more and more different cards. You can also hire allies and so on. The process is long, the process is interesting. 
it flows quite smoothly and becomes more complicated from round to round. In the end, when you reach the city, there are already dozens of enemies, dozens of parameters, and the last battle can take almost half an hour when you calculate everything and it's not a fact that you will still find a good fight option. There are examples of Let's Plays on this game on the channel, where we discussed one of the fights with the guys. And it took three days to discuss it, until we found the best option and the only option to win in this particular battle. And this is a good game. She has an open world, she has the development of this world, the disclosure of the card and the development of her hero with the help of a card engine. What is the gameplay in the Fog of Bones? You have a hero who comes here with such an empty mat in fact. It has sections of abilities, professions and there is a stat. And statistics. Health, attack, defense, agility. Depending on where you invest your development, you can develop different professions with different abilities. For example, this bombardier, he knows his profession, he knows how to collect bombs during the game and throws them at enemies. Moreover, there are different types of bombs. There are destructive, there are cleaning different properties, there are slowing, there is a smoke screen, there are various abilities to search the corpses of enemies to collect loot from them and the like. Then here the character development is not in improving the deck, but in improving his math. And this improvement is quite original in that we add cubes of professions to one degree or another. Let's say if we want to throw bombs, we can develop the profession of a bombardier and buy ourselves a cube tailcoat, for example. This is a standard bomber cube. What is she like? This is such a cube on which different values are drawn. Of these, there is a miss, there is a blow, well, there is a super blow, which is slightly better than the rest. That is, the probability of throwing a 3 here is much higher than to miss or throw a 4. And we'll get to that a little later about randomness. This is a separate section that will need to be highlighted. The gameplay here is that we pump the hero. Not even like that. We have days, we have a journey here on this static map. We are going to a specific tyrant. That is, at the beginning of the game we choose the main boss, the main villain. They are very, very different. They are very, very different, with different abilities, stunningly different. That is, if the mages in the night are, as a rule, the same cities, or in the additions there is some general who is actually also the same city, then here each enemy has its own individual abilities, individual requirements and features that you need to know at the very beginning of the game. And you need to prepare for them during the game. Because if you always pump the same way, you will win someone, and you will lose to the tyrant. So, the gameplay is that at the beginning we choose the main villain, the final boss and put him somewhere on the map. This is by the way, the map is absolutely not necessary, it is more of an addition. And then we note the progress that we are making towards it. We need to have time to develop to such an extent before some time to have a chance to face it. So, the gameplay is that every day we pull one event card. And this event may be a combat event, it may not be a combat event, it may be a test event, it may be something else. That is, every day you make a choice of two or three options for the development of events. This is where the narrative lies, which, for example, there is no magic in the night at all. Plus or minus, but this is a purely individual perception. We're going slowly. In the process, we have fights that unfold on such a 4x4 mat, where we immediately meet with several bad guys, they are called, in the world of playing with pests, with bad guys, with villains, in short. These villains come in different types, with different abilities, and I won't talk about that, because there's no point in describing the game in this comparison. If you are interested in the game, just go to the playlist on Tamani Bonds and enjoy all kinds of videos that I have. The same goes for The Night Magician. These are two of my favorite games, so they are the ones I have the most videos on my channel. That's the one that's the other. There are more than 20 of them, probably for every game. So, the gameplay consists in developing your character to move towards your goal and to destroy enemies in a way. Accordingly, when you have passed a certain day, you are given development points and with these development points you buy new cubes. 
That is, the gameplay is somewhat similar, only in Night Magi you buy, relatively speaking, new cards, and in Tamani Bombs new cubes. The gameplay, I think, is clear. What mechanics are used here? Mechanics in Knights, Magicians. This is more or less a typical destroy. He is not quite typical, because there is not enough of him. You just need to extract each card with great effort. But at the same time, you can still calculate to some extent what you need for a particular purpose. That is, if you see that your hero is slowing you down in motion, then you accordingly need to buy cards where there are more movement points. If you have a weak one, for example, some kind of ice magic, and you have solid ice enemies, then you need to pump the cards accordingly, with ice or fire magic. In a word, it is a mechanical kaladestroy. And here, mechanically, it can be said to be a classic RPG, where you pump the hero with your properties. And if you ask me which mechanics I like best in Knights of Magic or in the Fog of Bones, the answer for me here is also as unambiguous as in the previous section. If the narrative or the history of Tamani Bones definitely wins, then the mechanics for me are definitely more interesting and more coolly conceived, this is the Mac Knight. This is really a masterpiece of game design, which is difficult to find fault with. According to the mechanics, I definitely give the ball to the knight about the magician. And the gameplay probably as a whole, too. And you will say that this is, in general, the main thing in the game and why consider further. Here he is the leader in mechanics, he is more interesting, accordingly, he holds this first place, continues to hold it. Maybe, but let's look at this question further. And one more point that I want to mention in connection with the mechanics and the device, the general device of the game. Both of these games, they are solo games. Yes, they have a multi-mode of both, and they are designed to be played by several people. But in fact, this is absolutely a solo game. Night Mage is very difficult to play with more than two people or even more than one, because it becomes a slightly different game. In solo, it's a solitaire game that loads you up. In multiplayer, if you meet one experienced player, one inexperienced, it will be a torment for the experienced and a dubious pleasure for the inexperienced. If two experienced Night Mage players meet, they will actually engage in their own solitaire, not paying attention to what the second player is doing. Except for the player versus player mode, but I can't even imagine how this game is played in this mode. And I would venture to assume that it is bad. I won't even explain why. If suddenly someone from the audience plays the Night Magician well and wonderfully in the player versus player mode, right? I don't think there are any. It's the same with Tamani Bones. This is absolutely a solo game. Yes, it's fun to play in multiplayer, and I've tried it on the internet, and you've even seen recordings in this mode. It's quite fun. But in the fog of bones, the problem of the alpha player is very strong. If someone knows her well, then the second player, he will just do what the alpha player tells him, so to speak. There is not much of this problem here, because, because you are so busy with your own process that you have nothing else to do. Here the game is cooperative, and the alpha player here will decide. Very difficult. I even tried, when we played together, I just restrained myself with great effort, so as not to tell me how to walk properly. And here the moves are good, quite obvious and quite difficult not to impose them on the second player, who may not see them due to lack of experience, or does not know how his hero works and the like. That this moment needs to be remembered, it's mechanical, it's basically two solo games. Some of the best solo games in the world of desktop hobby. And one more section that I want to add here, but I will give a separate score for it, this is random. In these games, in both, there is some randomness, but it is very, very different. In the fog of the bonus, it just permeates the whole game and sometimes is not at its best in its form. In the Night Mage there is a random and he. How should I put it? 
If random in the night of magic he is Euro type, then random in the fog of bones he is a merry type. What is manifested here? You are pumping your deck, but the cards appear randomly in your hand. You do not control this process. Yes, you have received some kind of hand and already based on it, you form the gameplay. And he is already more or less not random. Yes, you can climb into some cave and get a random enemy there, or let's say an enemy like this that will pull out will not summon an unexpected monster, but that's all. It can be said that it is not even random. That is, the only random in the night of magic is in the arrival of cards. Sometimes they can come very successfully, and you will defeat some difficult enemies, and sometimes you will get such cards that you don't know what to do with them. And you just try to make optimal use of what has come to you. This is a Euro random. He is there, but he does not spoil the game in any way, in any way. We turn to the fog of bones. And here random is just everywhere. Randomness in the output of events. And these events are so different, there may be completely impassable events, or they may be so easy that you think what's the problem here. There is a random exit of enemies. There's a random on dice rolls, because here you draw cards, and cards, they are always cards, and here each cube may not be what it is. That is, even with the example of this banal grenade, it can become nothing in a miss, and you can't do anything. It can cause a lot of damage, it can be average. Yes, there is an average. The average probability of each throw, but it is not programmed, it is absolutely random. And here is a game that at first looks just random on random, that is, a pile of different random. And it can be very annoying. Just the other day I was playing a game against Hendrix. This is such a local tyrant, very harsh. And the last fight, it was actually one on one successful throw of one trap. If, for example, I hadn't successfully thrown out one cube there, well, it doesn't matter which one, but if it hadn't thrown out, I would have just lost the battle. And all my days, income before the tyrant, they are all strategic decisions, all successful fights, successful decision making, smart pumping and so on, they would just have crashed on one unsuccessful throw. And in the fog of bones, it can happen. You can do everything successfully, everything is pumped cool, everything is wise to act, and then one unsuccessful roll on one die and that's it. And such a randomness in an RPG and in a strategic tactical game, it can be very, very frustrating, turning the game into a kind of almost a merry thrash. Yes, of course, there is no pure merry thrash here, as in some Zambicide, where practically nothing depends on you, as the cubes rushed, so it's good. There is no such thing here, because if you just count on successful throws, you will never win. You need to be able to customize your hero for a specific task, be able to manipulate random, reduce its influence, and so on. That is, there is a smart pumping, there is a smart fight, but at the same time there is a chance to burn from unsuccessful dice rolls. Therefore, if a person likes random, then definitely Tamani Bones will have a score here. Who likes predictability, then there is definitely a point for a night magician. For me personally, I don't even know which of these two games I would give a point for a rand. I definitely like Night Mac more in this sense, but at the same time Tamani Bones is much, much more fun in this sense. And in the random section, I probably give a point to both that and that, and the other game. Simply due to the fact that both the one and the other random I really, really like it in relation to this, this implementation. It's just awesome here. It amuses you when it goes in your favor or even not in yours. And here it can be said that it is not. Although sometimes, when you just got lucky cards, you are happy how you were able to dispose of them. But it's hard to call it random. In general, here everyone, each game has one point. The next section is game time. 
And here, of course, everything is complicated, as they say. Both of these games are very, very long. But the Mac Knight is in its full implementation, it is much longer in time and not everyone is ready to withstand it. There are modes that reduce the duration of the game, but they make the game inferior. That is, let's say there are 6 days in a full-fledged Night Mage game. Well, that is, 3 days, 3 nights. And it is in this mode that it is all revealed. But to play these 3 days, 3 nights, you need 5 hours. Well, I don't know, well, relatively speaking, well, 3 hours. Well, actually more. Tamani Bones is also a long game. She can also take her 5 hours completely. But unlike the Night Mage, it is adjusted due to the duration of the tyrants. That is, each of these tyrants, he has his own requirements and his own duration of the game. And there you can play literally from 40 minutes to 3 or 4 hours, depending on who you want to fight. And at the same time, each of these games, it is full-fledged, it is not stripped down. It's just that tyrants are different. Therefore, the duration of the game and I still give a score to Tamani Bones, which is very, very flexible, unlike a Night Magician. Here you can, I repeat, from a 40 minute game with the same new 1 to 10s or 10s of hours, if you play, for example, in the company of the Age of Tyranny. Night Magic is a full-fledged game. It's 3 days, 3 nights. Decreases. The game gets worse, increases, the game becomes unbearable. That is, there is no flexibility in the duration of the game. Next, another very important section is the action. And here, here is a very difficult comparison, because you need to show what the fight is. And if you don't know this game, then you can't just show it. What is the fight of the Night Magician? Here we have a knight. We are approaching some kind of enemy. It could be a fortress with a whole bunch of these roundels. It can be a separate magic castle, when we approach, we meet, let's say, with such a wonderful wizard with an ice attack. And then we have a battle on the same maps with which we move, and develop crystal magic, and higher and everything else. And the battle also takes place on these maps. You need cards with attack, with blocks, and the like. The battle here is that you are trying to optimally use your cards to score fewer wounds and to better capture some objects on the map. This is more, let's say, strategic planning. That is, you are not meeting someone by chance, you can predict who you will fight and predict in advance whether you will be able to defeat him or not. And the fight itself, it is, in general, quite predictable. In the fog of bones, the fight always takes place on such a small 4x4 mat, where you have two lines for long range and melee enemies and two lines for the gerlocks themselves. It consists in the fact that you more or less randomly remove enemies from the stack and reveal them. Yes, there are mechanics that you can look at, but it's pretty limited. And let's be honest, as a rule, enemies are quite random and from this, it's interesting, it's dangerous. You form a certain set of enemies with different properties, you determine where you put your hero and then tactical dancing begins on this field. Enemies approach you according to certain rules, they throw poison at you, they try to destroy you in some way, you either run away from them or try to block. Each character has its own completely different properties. If a bomber throws bombs, if there is a patch doctor there who can poison enemies, can heal himself, can do something else. There is a girl psychopath who, with the help of his anger, can simply destroy enemies. There is a ghillie who can summon animals from nearby forests and try to somehow prolong his existence with the help of their power. And it goes several rounds. In turn, everyone walks, performs some properties. Each enemy has attack properties, there are properties of their additional abilities. The same thing, the hero has an attack, defense and a bunch of his properties. And you move heroes and enemies on this mat until someone dies. Until you destroy all the enemies or they destroy you. And here is this action, it is purely tactical. You actually solve the problem, 
sometimes for a very long time, sometimes a fight, this fight goes on, well, I'm afraid to lie, but sometimes for forty minutes. Especially the final battle, where there is Iran, where there are a lot of henchmen, especially if there are several Gerlocks. And then, when there are just a huge number of enemies and there is such a tug of war and you think you can't survive and sometimes you see enemies, you think this game is definitely lost, but you find solutions that allow you to somehow pull it out. And when you pull out an unwinnable battle, you just feel such delight in solving the problem. Practically, this game on a small field looks like the solution of some chess or checkers problem. With a lot of unknowns, because the dice rolls are always random. Yes, they are miscalculated, but they are still random. This is with a lot of unknowns, because the enemies are also throwing dice. They, for example, if this wolf throws 4 attack dice, it does not mean that 4 damage. It can be like 8 damage, because there is a deuce on the attack cup, there is a 1, there is a pass. It may even be 0. That is, yes, on average it will be 4 damage, but no one guarantees it to you. That is, the fight here is strategic planning. The fight here is a tactical, tactical dance. And what kind of action I like more, but definitely from a night magician. But the combat in the Night of Magi, it overloads you so much that you have enough party for a week, for months, sometimes for a year. She wears you out so much. The action is here, she's a fan. I do not know how to look at it from the outside, but when you immerse yourself in it, you do not notice these 10 or 20 minutes. You just click these chips, throw these dice. Oh, won or didn't win. The action here is a fan with a controlled random. The fight here is a pure miscalculation without randomness. I don't even know who to give a point to here. And, probably, still a night magician. The action here is a masterpiece. There are so many components of the equation and they are all not random. When you, you get their five chips like this, each has its own property and you need to calculate all these properties somehow and pick up your cards for them. This, well, it can't even be described, it just needs to be seen. That's what I'm sending you to. Here the action is fun. Yes, you control the random to some extent so that this action is in your favor, but it's not for you. But no matter how well you have thought out your throw, you still have some chance to fail it. Probably everything. Once again, I repeat that in the class, combat is tactical combat with controlled randomness, this is a combat for calculation without randomness. And here I will probably pass the ball to the night magician after all. Well, now, after quite objective sections of comparison, we will move on to the subjective. Feelings. What are the feelings of both games? And, it would seem, it will be the most difficult to describe here, but for me, on the contrary, it is easier. Because I played both of these games not so long ago, that is, this year and quite a lot. So, the feeling of a night magician. This is admiration. Moreover, this admiration has not passed three years since I met her. Each game in it is, well, a certain delight. But at the same time, there is also a feeling of complete intellectual exhaustion. A full six-day party in the Night of the Magician exhausts you intellectual so much that you go after the game, drink sweets just to replenish glucose, because your brain burned all this glucose in your body to calculate endless options. And the feeling, it's admired, but it's exhausted. Playing the night mage is exhausting for you. Really exhausting, intellectually exhausting. I will repeat this word ten times again so that you understand the feeling. Tomany Bones is not intellectually exhausting. There are no complicated intellectual tasks here. There is no such exhaustion here. Yes, it's long-lasting, it is. But the decisions you make during the game, they are not difficult. The tasks here are complicated. Here they are more or less obvious. Yes, after you recorded the display, for example, and reviewed it, you saw that you did something stupid here, stupidity here, you could have played better here. But this difference is not fundamental. 
And you don't get tired of this game, like a night magician. You really get tired of being a night magician. If you played it twice in two games in a row, you probably won't get it for a month afterwards. In the fog of bones, as soon as you have played it, you can decompose the tyrant, the next adventure and quite enjoy yourself again. Therefore, it feels more pleasant for me to play in the fog of bones. But I feel much more purely intellectual delight from a night magician. This conclusion is confirmed by the number of games played. During the six months of the existence of Tamani from my collection, I played it to me more than 30 times. During the three years of the existence of the Night Magician in my collection, I played about 10 times. It's kind of obvious enough. At the same time, I am not in a hurry to give a subjective score according to feelings, then we are not bones, because I cannot take her as seriously as a Night Magician. It seems to me that the excitement of the game is a more important feeling than fanhood. I admire the game of the Night Magician after each game. A game in the fog of bones, yes, it can be fun, maybe not. Here it changes from party to party. Sometimes the party is so great that you think, wow, you feel ecstatic as a night magician, but, and it may well be a completely crooked, stupid, unsuccessful party. And it depends on something. And since there is a lot of randomness here, then it depends on randomness. There may be very interesting action movies, or there may be the most boring, stupid action movies that are simply not interesting. There may be very interesting side events, or maybe there will be some, let's say, non-combat ones. This can also be, or vice versa, some fighting and in a completely unsuccessful way. That is, every third party is probably in a fog of bones, it turns out to be boring due to the fact that this is a lot of randomness. There is no such thing in a night of magic. And to fall in love with Tamani Bones, you need much more effort and much more parties than the Knights of the Magician. In the Knights of the Magician, you can play one game and fall in love with it for the whole life of your hobby, so to speak. There are no bones in the fog, you won't get anything in one batch. You can play three games and still wonder, where is the fan here, where is the pleasure here? Therefore, here in the sensations of the game, and I probably still give a point to the Knight O Mage. Well, let's calculate the result of such a comparison. We have Tamani Bone score for appearance and components. Here I still give an advantage compared to the Knight of the Magician. Score for genre, score for narrative, score for random, score for game time and that's it, 5 points. Tamani Bones earned me 5 points in this comparison. The Mac Knight gets a pot, gets a ball for genre, a ball for mechanics, gameplay, a ball for random, a ball for action, a point for the feeling of the game. Five points. <laughs> Equality. Suddenly, equality turned out. Let me introduce another criterion. This is an addition. If you take the games not just by themselves bases, but with additions, will there be any advantage? Both games have a lot of additions, the Night Magician has fewer of them, there are three. These are additional heroes. Tomini Bones also has additional heroes. There is additional content. These are the shadows of a Tesla for a night magician in 40 days in Daler or Space Dice is an age of tyranny. These are the additions that expand the content. And there are additions that change the game dramatically. This is the missing legion for the night magician from the place for Tamani Bones, where the game completely changes, where you create, where you play as the local Gerlach Nebulus Grint, who creates tyrants. And you can play for him and create some kind of tyrant for this world, and then he also fights with this self-created tyrant. Moreover, this gameplay, 
it is radically different from what we saw in the database. That is, both the game and the other have all kinds of additions. But if we consider these additions from a critical point of view, then Tamani Bones is far, far ahead. There is an addition of new heroes. What is the new hero in the Knight of Magic? This is still the same Knight Mac with a new deck, which actually differs from the deck of any other magician by one, maximum two cards. What is the difference of the new hero Gerlock? This is a brand new game. And if you play as Boomer, you play as Patches, or you play as Gilly, or anyone, this is a completely new game. Each new hero gives you a new game. And in addition to the rest, we look at the Knight Mac, let's say, the Tenny Theses. In fact, you are playing the same Mac Knight, but you have new enemies, you have new scenarios. New scenarios, not bad. If we take an add-on that expands the base, this is the Age of Tyranny, we get new mechanics of the wounds, we get a new company system that turns the game into a long story. We receive cards of new events. If we take the 40 days of the Lori supplement, we get new tyrants, we get new enemies. That is, in this section, we can say they are comparable. But there are more of them here. And if you take one more addition, this is the missing legion. He greatly improves the game, but does not bring anything radically new. Whereas here the splice dice gives a completely new feeling of the game. That is, the additions of Tamani Bones, they are, even, one can say, not one point more, but two points more. And after I talked about the supplement, I probably decided on my decision after all. Who is for the magic of board games, for me personally the top one in the board world? And I believe that the game, the best game in the world of board games is still Night Mac. But, if we take into account the additions, then Tamani Bones becomes the number one game for me. If you take the bases, take the base of Tamani Bones and take the base of the Night Mage, then the Night Mage remains in the first place for me. Definitely. But if you take in the complex, take Night Mac with all the additions and take Tony Bon with all the additions, then Tamani Bones can claim the first place for the first time in three years. I guess that's where I'll decide, and that's where I'll stop. Now I officially have two favorite games in the first place. This is Night Mac and this is Tumani Bones with additions. Without the addition, it is still in second or even third place. Thank you for watching this chaotic video, but in fact, for my channel and for my hobby, this is a very important and one can say the key video. Since the top one is an important moment for any fan of board games. Well, in the comments, I traditionally invite you to write your top one, the best, your favorite game. Because even my top one is not set in stone and may well change. And new games appear, new impressions appear, new mechanics and a new approach to game design appear. And it's not a fact that our new first place will last as long as the first place of a night magician. Bye and see you all on the Magic of Board Games channel.